Office of Academic Asaurus. We can't come to the phone right now. We've had a disappearance in the family. Try back when things aren't so terrible. Oh, Jeff. So anyway, that's why I think cannibalism really isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> Don't you have something else, anything else to do today? No. Ugh, maybe. Great, why don't you take that outside? Whose number is this? Why would I know? Hello? B, go outside. Shh. Kettle Badger. How the hell did you get this number? Hold on. I'm going to put you on speakerphone. I don't have a lot of time. Kettle, what's going on? Oh, hi, Professor Winters. Uh, okay, so I kind of need some help. Are, are you okay? Where are you? I'm in Dr. Dean Emily Kant's office. <laughs> You're what? <laughs> what? Well, remember when we broke into the concession stand, Librarian West? Yes, yes I do. Well, I kind of watched what you did, and it was so cool that I've been practicing. Oh my god, you've created a felon. Kettle, you have just gone way up in my estimation. <laughs> oh, thanks! Okay, that doesn't really explain why you're in Emily Kant's office, of all places. Well, it's a long story, and I don't have much time. Is there any chance you two could maybe walk and talk? Maybe towards Dr. Kant's office, where you could maybe waylay her before she can come in here and find me? Is she nearby? I can hear her talking out in the main office. That's what you get for breaking in somewhere at nine in the morning. Well, I didn't. I broke in at seven. And then I got distracted. Ugh, by what? Uh, are you on your way? Uh, give us one good reason why we should stick our necks out for you. Because she's our student, B. Isn't that enough? I found the painting... What? what? And I found a novel on Dr. Kant's uh, computer desktop. We are definitely walking. You you hacked into Emily's computer? Let me get out of the way. I have to lock my office door. We don't have time for paltry attempts at security. Uh, oh my god. Okay, locked. Kettle, the computer? Well, I wasn't exactly planning on doing anything with her computer, but I bumped into her desk when I was pushing the painting out of her office window and it was unlocked. Wait. Did you say you were pushing the painting out the window? Uh huh. It's in the bushes down below. My God, Kettle. How did you know to go looking for the painting in Emily's office? Um, I sort of broke into Dr. Caldwell's office first. Kettle, 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 kettle. I needed to try her psychic paper machine again. She's been super duper distant lately, and she stopped letting me come into the lab whenever she's in there with Griswold. And I'm supposed to be in the lab. I'm the lab assistant. Griswold? What's he doing with Perry Caldwell? But wait, I thought the psychic paper machine or, or whatever was broken. She fixed it. At least a little. Enough for me to be able to grab it without it being in a million pieces. And I stashed it away in the stairwell by Professor Dye and Professor Henderson's office. You know, where you found that mysterious door? Uh-huh. Yes. Ida, walk faster. I'm coming. I didn't expect to be sprinting today when I chose my footwear. Anyway, so I took the machine there and decided to try it out just to see if anything would happen. It still wasn't working properly, but then it hit me. What did? How to fix the machine. Somehow, I knew just what I had to do to repair it. Which was? Bubblegum! 
bubble gum? How does one bubble gum? <laughs> no, no, no. I used bubble gum. I just needed to brace some of the connections so they wouldn't become loose and would hold uh, in the required position. Thankfully, I had just bought a fresh pack of bubble gum, and it worked perfectly. Psychic bubble gum. Genius. I can't tell if you're serious or not. Neither can I. So, you got the machine to work. I did! Did you reach anyone? Or any ghost? Semantics. I did! Who? Well, I'm never completely sure, you know. But I think it was Dean Bowles. Good old Edna Bowles. <laughs> what did she say? She said, uh-oh. Oh, that feels like an ominous thing for a ghost to say. No, I can hear Dr. Camp's voice getting closer. We're almost there. Why can't you jump out the same window you threw the painting out of? Uh, the Jormungandr soccer team just started practicing outside right after I did it. We have a soccer team? Oh, yes, they're terrible. Shocking. We're almost there. Okay. Okay, hanging up. Figure out what to do on your end. Okay, you can count on... Hey, Emily. Uh, she means doctor, can't? What are you two doing here? Well, it's so funny you should ask that. Can we talk to you outside? What? Outside of where? Um, like the building. What? I'm still super nervous about this virus stuff. And yet, you and Professor Winters are standing directly next to each other with zero masks. Well, we see each other a lot. Ida needs a lot of emotional support. I do not! Uh-huh. Look, I'm very busy. I haven't even stepped into my office yet, and as you can see, the department secretary is out. And I've had to take care of several things she couldn't be bothered to organize before getting sick. Oh god, she's sick? Food poisoning. Uh-huh. But anyway, I need to get into my office, so if this can wait... Okay, let's go there. <laughs> uh, I don't think we... Ugh. Fine, let's step into the hall. Great. Alright, what's all this about? Uh, why don't we walk and talk? You are standing eight feet away from me and backing away while you talk. I don't have the coronavirus and I'm not going to get you sick. Up to 45% of people could be asymptomatic. Uh, we're also super into exercise. Look, what do you want? Uh, you said you needed to interview us for the accreditation process. I did, yes, but not today. Did you not get the emails I sent you both scheduling the interviews for this Thursday? Oh, is that what that was? What did you think it was? Um, just another departmental update meeting. There are a lot of those, you've got to admit. I sent you questions, and look... We'll meet on Thursday. If you're still concerned about the coronavirus, we can meet outside at one of the benches. But prepare your best answers for those questions because you'll be reflecting the values and promise of this institution. We've got to get those doors open. Doors? What doors? I mean, the doors to better funding and keeping our accreditation so we can remain a functioning university. So take it seriously. Now, unless you have some kind of news about Professor Dye. She'll be back soon. Right. Are we done here? Um, yep. All good. Thanks. Great talk. This is why nothing ever gets done in higher education. I need a lot of emotional support. Don't blame me. She drew her own conclusions. No, she didn't. Those were actual words out of your actual mouth. Ugh. <sighs> Hey, it was either that or I was going to tell her we'd begun a relationship and needed to fill out all those conflict of interest forms. Conflict of interest? What would you do? Let me have first dibs on the interlibrary loan offerings? Uh, that would be the kind of thing I would do for that special someone in my life, yes. Uh-huh. Aren't you still technically married? Oh, yeah. <sighs> Where did Kettle go, anyway? She ducked down here. Check the stairwell. And there she is. Whew! You two really saved me! Thanks so much! <laughs> Don't mention it. First rule of breaking and entering kettle. Never do it during normal hours of operation. I know, I know, but I just got really overexcited by my successful heist of the psychic paper machine. Doesn't it have some fancy technical name? No one cares. 
I bet you'll care about this. A flash drive? A flash drive with Dr. Kant's novel on it. You are absolutely right. I care about that a lot. Why do you want to read a novel by Emily? I can't even picture what it would be about. And speaking of pictures. Mm, right. Kettle, can you lead us to the painting? But the Jormungandjurs are practicing outside. If it's the soccer team, they've probably already devolved into an all-out brawl. It'll be fine. <laughs> they had so many arrests last year. What? Oh, yeah. They got into it with the Cool City Tommyknockers. Four broken noses and eight wrists and splints. <laughs> Good thing they don't need their wrists to play soccer. Unlike the volleyball team, that was bad. Oh, God. I forgot about the volleyball incident. Sports are so civilized. I'm so glad they get all our funding. Are they still out there? Um, I see... Two people with bloody noses lying on the ground, but they seem to be breathing, so... Praise be. Ooh, I see the painting. Okay, so if we stick to the side of the building and head towards the garden maze, nobody looking out should be able to see us. But the sciences building is right there. It's the sciences? They never look outside. Except it's the natural sciences building. Oh shit, they love the outside. I've got to head and make sure nobody's coming. I can run into the Natural Sciences Building, too, and see if anyone's there. Roger that. Okay, I'll be back. Should I, I don't know, get a drop cloth or something to cover the painting with? No, then we'll be carrying around a drop cloth covered painting, which is just as suspicious as a non-drop cloth covered painting. I guess. If it's covered, though, we can always lie and say it's one of Exy's works. Or a gift from Horatio that we're taking to bury in that weird patch of dead land over behind the gym. Speaking of Horatio, you think Jeff's okay? His fish that Ann and Kettle claim can talk? I have no fucking idea. Why would you... Oh, Kettle's waving. Okay, let's go. Okay, I... Shoot! Who is it? It's Experience Caldwell. Shit. Is she in the Natural Sciences Building? No, she's in the Computer Sciences Building. It's on the other side. Well, what the fuck does she want? Shh! I'll put her on speakerphone. Hello? Hey, Ida. It's Perry. Oh, hey, Perry. How are you? I'm good. Have you seen Kettle Badger today? Kettle? No. Why? I just need to talk to her. Obfuscation. <laughs> what? Sorry. That was the wind. No, I haven't seen her, though. Is it serious? Did she do something? Um, no, it, it's fine. I just need to tell her that I'm letting her go. Keeping secrets. You're letting her go? You mean from the lab assistant position? Why? Oh, you know how it is right now. Hard enough to get funding during a regular year. Pandemic year? Ever. Huh. Well, she'll be sorry to hear that. I know she loves working in the lab. She sure does. Anyway, I'll call her again and leave her a message. If you see her, though... I'll tell her you were looking for her. Ask about the machine. Uh, oh, um, while I've got you, any progress on the machine? What machine? Uh, the psychic paper machine? Is there another machine? Oh, um, <laughs> no, yeah, of course. No, it's still broken. I can't figure out what happened to it. That is so weird. It sure is. Okay, well, thanks so much for your time. Talk soon. Okay. Secrets, secrets everywhere and not a drop to drink. That's not how that goes. The secret sits in the middle and knows. What? The fuck? <laughs> it's a Robert Frost poem. I'm not sure why I know a Robert Frost poem, but you know. Uh-huh. Uh, okay, let's get into the maze. I think I know where to go. I was scoping the place out last week before I ran into you both, and I found a couple of possibilities for where we could put the painting. That's, that's great, Kettle. Um, we do have some bad news, though. Oh, was it about the phone call? E yeah, Dr. Caldwell says she's letting you go as lab assistant. A are you okay? Yeah, I mean, I sort of figured that would probably happen. So she knows about the machine? She does, but she didn't admit as much to us. Really? I wonder why not. Because she's clearly up to something with Griswold Fox, that's why. <gasps> you mean the 
they're in cahoots? Or into some deep shit, whichever. I like my phrase better. Me too. Uh, oh, oh wow, this looks really promising. I think the pain, yeah, it fits, holy shit. Call Anne. You have the walkie-talkie. Oh, right. Anne. Anne! Did you find it? We did. Where are you? In the hallway of doors. We've set up the door. I don't see any new knobs. Exie says try opening the door. Um, the doorknob isn't popping up like the window latch did. There's, there's nothing for me to grab. I don't think this is right. Fuck, fuck. Wait, there's another spot we can try too. All right, we'll call back in a second. Wait, shit. Is that the fucking running team? We have a running team? Uh oh, here, hide the painting. This bush looks big enough. Okay, the fucking running team is coming through the maze. This may take a little longer. It's fine. I mean, it'll all just be a few minutes here anyway. Yeah, brag away. Okay, bye. Well, that was anticlimactic. Still time for something insane to happen. Um, do you think you'll be able to come out with me? What, through the door? Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I can. Not without remembering, and I can't remember. You mean what happened to you? Yeah, I remember coming to see Trudy. She was going to tell me something, give me some kind of warning. Oh, she was running kind of late on that. Yeah. So she knew that bad things were happening. She was never quite that direct. I guess bad things had always been happening, hence her intense secrecy. She didn't know about the sisters of the Nightshade Rose. A group contacting you and Langdon Dread, and whatever it is that Remember Brattle is mixed up in. I don't know if those two groups are the same. What do you mean? Wait, I think Langdon Dredd said something like that too. He thought there was a divide in the group. I do not believe that the group represented by Remember Brattle necessarily has bad intentions, but the other group... The group that split off from the sisters. Yes, I think they learned that what's in the school is bigger than just Vixu. How? Did Trudy know? Trudy was a force of nature. And it just so happened that, by chance, she picked a piece of land that was also a force of nature all on its own. So she knows. <sighs> yes, Trudy knows what's under the school. So Vixu and something else. Do you have any idea what the something else is? I don't even know what Vixu is. I've never seen her or whatever. I can't get down that deep. It's all far older than what we can imagine, though. At least, that's the impression I got from Trudy's journals. Great. Anne, I have to tell you something. Okay. This is my fault. I mean, not all of it, but a lot of it is my fault. How? Before me, before I started making my paintings and walking through the levels of this place, everything here had been dormant, sleeping almost. Trudy had made sure of it. She did? Yes. I never got the full story, but it had something to do with Alden Atwell. The guy who stepped in after Axie disappeared? He had figured out her secret too, but she stopped everything and closed it off before he could get to anything. I think, I don't know, we never got to that part of her story, and understandably she'd stopped writing in her journals before then. And then she disappeared. Yes, into the school. And deeper than where we are. We're gonna have to get down there. I don't know how. I'm beginning to think I might. Whoa! What is that? Anne? What did you do? What do you mean? There's a door down at the very end of the hall, and it's shimmering. What? Can they open the door? Can you open the door in the painting? No. Okay, hold on. Let me try. Careful. Ah, it's like vibrating. It's like touching the hood of an old car. Wait, it's changing. Ida, open the door. Anne! Ida! Come on, come on, it's been fucking hours. And the goddamn running team decided to have a fucking picnic out here. Did they leave any food? I'm starving. Anne, quickly, I can see the shadows moving. Oh, fuck. Okay, do you want to try and come too? No, I think I have to stay down here. What, forever? Someone has to open the door from the other side if you're coming back, don't they? Well, take the walkie-talkie then. I don't think it'll work without your connection. It's worth a try, though. Okay, I'll be back. I strongly suspect I'll be here. Okay. Okay, close it. Professor Dye! Anne, oh my god, it's so good to see you. You too. You smell like a secret hidden basement. Thank you. You smell like evergreen. 
Bee fell in a bush trying to shove the painting out of sight when the runners came around. Oh, I'm so fucking hungry. We'll take you somewhere for food. Lots and lots of food. Yes, all the food. Okay, whoa. What the fuck is my phone? <laughs> 674 messages? Who the fuck? B. <laughs> yes. I tried to stop her. My phone is completely locked up. Mm, should have upgraded before you went underground. I'm too hungry to be as mad as I should be about this. Uh, Kettle, are you coming? Oh, uh, well, you see, I just got fired. I'm already tight on buns, so I don't know about eating out. Forget it. You've got a new job. Uh, I do? What do you know about Wikipedia? <laughs> oh, well, I know it's not edited by Keanu Reeves. That much is for sure. Hmm. I'll overlook that disappointment. Um, what happened to my old student? Huh. He tried to tell Emily about Keanu Reeves running Wikipedia. V? What? If he's too dumb to research in his library position, then maybe he doesn't need it after all. He told a student that Keanu Reeves edits Wikipedia? And writes all the entries. Oh, I see I haven't missed much. Nah. Anyway, you're hired, Kettle. Well, stay in one piece a little longer. I'm going to need you to help me move this. What the fuck? Whoa, get away from it. The painting? What's it doing? It's, it's bubbling. How did this happen? Well, fuck. There goes that access point. How does this keep happening? Something really doesn't want us going down there. Oh, shit. B, give me your walkie-talkie. Here. Axie? Axie. Anne? Calling Anne. One, two... Of course it doesn't work. And now we wait, I suppose. You've done what you can. Is it enough? It will have to be. The others are learning. I know. I can feel it. Don't worry. We'll still get you home. If you say so. For now... We have to restructure. Is this doorway dead too? I expect so. It will be removed and we'll wait for the next. We have other things to do in the meantime. Are you still with me? Of course, Trudy. Good. Academicosaurus is a bird in a sweater creation in association with the Creeptopolis Creeps. For more information, you can visit us on our website at academicosaurus.wixsite.com slash home. You can also come talk to us on Twitter or Instagram, or you can send us an email at academicosaurus at gmail.com. I have it on good authority that Mary might actually check that sometime before the end of July. It's very exciting. Our performers for this episode are Marina Matlock as Ida Winters, Amanda funk Hilton as B. West, Mary O'Reilly as Anne Dye, Ramona Maria as Kettle Badger, Tina as Emily Kent, Natasha Karamusis as XC Enright, Samantha Barr as Experience Caldwell, Dave Opilta as our weeping introductory Horatio, and introducing Laura Keyes as Trudy Breyer. Laura does living history performances where she portrays women from history such as Laura Ingalls Wilder and Mary Todd Lincoln. You can find her at Historic Voices, so look that up. This episode was written and edited by Mary, and our theme music is Shake It by Jazar. To find more, visit betterwithmusic.com. Thank you for listening to Academicosaurus. If you enjoyed our show, please subscribe and leave us a tweet or a comment. Tell your friends, and special thanks to our friends who are super sweet and kind and donated to our Coffee Ko-Fi account. Thank you to Mary's mom. Hi, Mary's mom. Sarah, who listed as anonymous, but Mary knows it was you and our wonderful Violet. Thank you so much, Violet. If any of us had prophetic powers, we really should have called the Sisters of the Nightshade Rose, the Sisters of the Nightshade Pilots. Someone get us a time turn. We'd warn everyone about this pandemic thing too, we promise. Alrighty, we'll be back again in two weeks with our sixth episode. Boy, for the year that never ends, we're moving pretty quickly through these podcast episodes. Anyway, stay safe, stay sane, and don't actually talk to the voices coming out of your vents. They're not who they seem.
Okay, so ready? Let's go. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. Go <Cattle>. team. <laughs> sorry. I'm so, sorry. I didn't realize you were starting. No, that's perfect. 